There's a special play that Roger Federer uses a lot against his opponents to win easy points. And in this strategy analysis breakdown video, I'm gonna show you exactly what it is and how you can use it at home. You don't need any super fancy high performance strokes or techniques in order to do it. It's really pretty easy. And we're gonna be using a bunch of examples of Roger Federer versus Novak Djokovic. First, really quickly, before we go to the point play analysis, just wanna say thank you all so much for all your support over the last couple of videos. It really means a lot to all of us. We're working hard to improve this type of content. It's just great to know that you appreciate it. So go ahead, give this video a thumbs up if uh, you've been following along and you like these strategy breakdowns. And today we're gonna be taking a look at some points from Federer versus Djokovic in 2019, no, 2020, sorry, 2020 Australian Open. So here we have Roger Servin, and I want you to check out Novak's starting position to begin with. He's offset a pretty good amount towards the alley, and this is pretty common for professional players. You'll notice his foot here on his left side is actually partially in the doubles alley. And he's doing this because he would very much like to hit a forehand. I'll be showing you some stats breakdowns of his forehand versus his backhand ground stroke in a little bit to kind of illustrate this. But notice how he's leaving a little bit more space open on his forehand side. He'd like to hit a forehand. So for most tennis players, I think in Roger's situation, seeing this setup, I think we tend to think, oh, okay, I'll show you. If you don't want to hit backhands, I'm just going to really make sure to target that corner and make my opponent hit backhand after backhand after backhand. But watch what Roger does in this point instead. He serves down the tee, stretches Novak out, and then opens up the court. So what Roger has done here is he has gone at Novak's strength on purpose and of, of course hit a fantastic serve, but in doing so, he stretched Novak out in this direction, which opens up Novak's weakness on the next shot. So after Novak hits that forehand return of serve, all of his momentum is going in this direction. And he gets himself pretty well balanced before Roger's next shot. But if you look at his posture and position as Roger gets ready to hit the next ball, watch what Novak has to do. Right before contact, he shifts to his right. So what Novak is doing here is he's just guessing. He's making an educated guess about what direction Roger's gonna go. And he's really forced to have to do that because look at Roger's position. He's moved around this floating return and instead of hitting a backhand, he's gonna hit a forehand instead, Roger's favorite shot. And so as he approaches this shot, Novak just makes an educated guess to shift over to his right. He's saying, oh, I, think, I think Roger will go this way. He doesn't know for sure, but he's making a guess here and that opens up a huge target for Roger. Here's another point later in the first set. Again, Roger's serving, but this time from the deuce side. So things are a little bit different here because now the angle of Roger's serve can hit and the spin that he creates as a right-handed player naturally draws the ball off the court. On the ad side, his down the tee serve to Novak's forehand draws Novak into the middle of the court. And he can still, st still stretch him out, but it's towards the center here he's gonna be stretching Novak out, going towards his strength out wide and off the court, which is super, super powerful. So watch how Roger puts this together. Going out wide, stretching Novak, getting another weak return, and then getting him on the run and just keeping his foot on the gas and continuing to pressure him back and forth. So again, here's the initial serve. Here's the stretch. You notice here that Roger actually had committed to coming forwards anyway. He was coming in behind this ball, basically no matter what Novak was gonna do with the return of serve. He's, he's essentially serving and volleying. So when Novak floats it back short, Roger kind of puts on the brakes, let the ball, lets the ball bounce. And so this is obviously <laughs> massive, massive problem for Novak, completely off the court. Roger has the entire court to hit to. And Roger kind of played it a little conservatively here by pulling back, allowing the ball to bounce, and then just kind of taking a casual shot to the open courts. And so Novak ends up getting this back, but Roger has hurt him so much that he just keeps him on the ropes the entire point. Obviously, great defense by Novak, makes Roger have to play another shot, but the damage had already been done. When Roger pulled 
Novak off the court with his very first shot. He just has a stranglehold on the points. And this is all planned. And that is such a big lesson for all of you watching at home. This is not on accident. Roger is stepping up to the line to serve with this plan in his head. He knows his serve target. He has an idea, a picture in his mind of how he'd like this point to unfold. And in this particular example, it just works absolutely perfectly. Here's a third example, a little bit different twist on this. And after this example, I'm gonna show you some stats from this match that really kind of illustrate the balance here between forehand and backhand. Uh, Novak's stronger side versus his slightly weaker side. He's an incredible return serve player. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Let's go ahead and look at this example really quick. Again, this is on the ad side. Roger again goes down the tee. Novak again is forced to guess, and this time he actually guesses correctly. Let's break that down really quick. So on the ad side, so this time going at Novak's strength moves him towards the middle of the court. So while his return isn't strong, it leaves him right in the center of the court. So Roger doesn't mind that. I mean, of course, Roger would rather have, remember how far off the court Novak was before? He was like literally completely off the court on the deuce side. On the ad side, there's not quite as much advantage because he's not pulling Novak completely off the courts. But what he's done is given himself this incredible opportunity at this shot right here. You give Roger Federer a floating, sitting ball that he can hit as a forehand in the middle of the courts. I mean, you obviously put your money on Roger in that match all day long. So this is exactly the result that he wants from this play. And watch Novak here as... Roger gets ready to hit. Watch Novak shift right before Roger hits. Roger has not hit the ball yet. He's either reading Roger's setup or he's just going based on past history and saying, okay, in this situation, where does Roger like to go? Is he gonna go here? Is he gonna go there? And just making an educated guess, one of the two. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. You think Novak here is reading something about Roger's like setup with his body or his stance or something? Or do you think he's making an educated guess based on past history? Curious what you think. So he makes that educated guess and or read, shifts to the right, and he's, he's correct. But similar to the previous point, the damage has already been done here. Roger has already been able to strike a ball that's sitting in the middle of the court with his forehand, and he's coming in behind it. Novak has a decent look here at a passing shot, but... You look at the position he's in, you know, this is less than ideal for Novak, obviously. And Roger, again, smart money is going to take Roger in this position all day, up close to the courts with his opponent off balance. And so he's in total control of the point here. Novak does have an opportunity here to pass. Roger did not quite get to an ideal position. Ideal net position for Roger would have been somewhere closer to here. Didn't have quite enough time to get there. But regardless... Roger gets a relatively easy play at this volley and is able to just put it away. So some of you may be thinking to yourself, oh, well, Novak's like one of the greatest returners of all time. And that's true. But let me show you some stats from this match to really illustrate the forehand versus backhand. So here's the stats from this match. And this is for all three sets that they played. Roger Federer on the left column, Djokovic on the right. And here we have backhand winners and backhand unforced errors. So these are backhands for both players. And you see Roger for the whole match hit four winners and he had 15 unforced errors. So obviously not a weapon. This is, this is a liability for Roger. He, Roger does not want to hit a lot of backhands in this match. Obviously, if he can minimize them, then great. Novak's ratio is a little better, but he's at five winners to 10 unforced errors. So it's still doubled the unforced errors to winners, which is pretty significant. And when we look at forehands, we've got Roger at 15 winners to 16 unforced errors, so pretty even. Not, not a great day for Roger, frankly. And a lot of that is the, the defense of Novak. And then Novak, on the forehand side, this surprised me, five winners and seven unforced errors. So neither of them hit a ton of winners, but you can see that the forehand is just the better side for both players. They're both really close to even between winners and unforced errors. Whereas on the backhand side, they're making more mistakes and they're hitting less outright winners. So both of these players on this day would absolutely rather have a forehand as opposed to a backhand.
So now let's look at some specific application. I'm gonna show you how to do this for yourself and use the same patterns that we see Roger Federer using. And by the way, if just seeing the examples of Roger have already been helpful, do me a favor and just click like below the video. It really helps me very much. It helps the videos get shared out to more people. So click like if this has been helpful already. So in this example here, I think what's really important when you're playing against a returner is first and foremost, pay attention to what their position is. What are they doing with their position? If this is a right-handed player and they really hate their backhand, you will frequently see this type of positioning where they're just begging you to hit them some kind of shot on the right side of their body. And so this type of position right here should be a red flag to you immediately. Lee. <laughs> got it should be a red flag to you immediately that you have a big opportunity here because this person is just trying desperately to hide this side of their body they really don't want to hit any kind of backhand so when you see this position that indi indicates to you I have this chance to do this and so key number one obviously is the accuracy on the serve to the extent that you can place your serve in the corner is to the extent that you can get this person stretched out after the bounce and off the court, just like you saw Roger do to Novak. And then key number two, once you accomplish that and this person has been stretched out and they are off the court, is you wanna start thinking about the next shot ahead of time. So don't wait and see what they do with the ball. Once you've accomplished this much bad position for your opponent. Once you force their hand to be that poor off the courts, start to cheat a little bit. Normally, in this situation, the right place to be is over on this side of the courts because you wanna cut off the possible angles that they have. But if you get your opponent really stretched and extended, some type of shot hit cross court over here becomes really, really unlikely. It's very difficult from a full stretch to hit the ball cross courts. So once you see them really stretched out of position, what you actually want to do is break the rule and start to slide a little bit to your left if you're a right-handed player and you want to hit a forehand. Because what's coming next, more than likely, is something that's going to be weak and towards the middle of the courts and probably actually favoring a little bit to the other side of the courts because this person is stretched out and in trouble. Just like you saw from Novak against Roger just a, a couple seconds ago. So you want to start cheating over a little bit, anticipating something in this area. And if they do hit something back weak and short and kind of floating, this is your chance to hit a forehand instead of a backhand. And where do you think you want to go with this shot? Well, to the open courts, to your opponent's weakness. And now you've got them charging across the entire court to hit the shot that they were trying to avoid in the first place. So you can see there's a lot of different elements that are working in your favor and it just gives you tremendous leverage in the point. And so if you can think ahead like this and place your serve and then anticipate the next shot, you've got yourself really, really well set up. So if this example is helpful to you, do me a favor and click like. And also let me know, which players would you like me to break down and analyze in my next video? It was really fun to check out Federer versus Djokovic. Some great examples there. But what players do you want me to break down? Who would you like me to analyze in the next video? Until then, thank you for watching. Take care.